Okay, so this is supposed to be covering lab 6. I'm sure by now, well, I'm sure you are already noticing some of the few differences. First off, I'm using a proper dedicated microphone, not just what's on the GoPro. I had originally done that, I just forgot to hit record on a, in Audacity. Second, I figured out a way to mount my power supply unit so that the readout is facing up and it is actually usable, you guys can see what it's, uh, what it's doing. Uh, second, or third, I lost count, anyway. I have made the light a lot softer, so now there will be, hopefully, less reflections. Hopefully. If nothing else, it'll be uh, just generally better. Third, I've adjusted the angle of the camera so there's less images of my crotch. And by far the best is that. With all that out of the way, um, let's get to it. Lab 6. Lab 6 is about differentiating between series and parallel type circuits. Or, well, resistances in particular. When we talk about a series, about something being in series, it means that they have the same current going through them. When we talk about something being in parallel, it means that they have the same voltage across them. There is a big difference between these two. Now, I have not even looked at Lab 6, so... I really have no idea what to expect. But if you bear with me, we'll get through it. So, let's start by copying that. And we have our And then we have I also got myself one of these. Okay. So that makes R1 and R2. And this again is your positive. We are talking about voltage. If you know if you pay it close attention, you will notice that this resistor and this resistor are side to side. Whatever voltage is over here is also going to be over here and is also going to be over here. And since these two sides of these two resistors are connected to ground or to the negative terminal, these two voltages are also going to be zero. So the voltage across these resistors is going to have to equal the voltage of the supply they are in parallel. They both have the same voltage drop. That is, what is, that is what is meant when something is in parallel. They have the same voltage across them. So that is 20 volts. If I put a probe over here, that is good. You know what? If I were to measure, if that's, that was, if I were to measure 20 volts here, then I come over and I come over here and I do that I'm also going to measure 20 volts if I come over here I'm also going to measure 20 volts because I am measuring the same thing this is connected to that that is connected to this this is this is connected also to this that is what that like dot means so no matter where I probe if I probe that, if I probe this, this, if I do this, it's going to be the same voltage. It's going to be our supply voltage. That means that these two resistors are in parallel. Now, where this gets tricky is current. When we're talking about current, 
we are going to have one current coming out of our supply. We're going to label this lowercase i. But once it gets to here, this is like a, uh, a T in standard plumbing, or a Y. Effectively, you're going to have some current going down through here. I'm going to label this I1, and some current going down through this. I'm going to label this I2. And then the same, because there is nowhere else for the current to go, current over here is going to be I2, and then the current down here is going to be I1. Then once the current comes over here, that is going to be I1 plus I2, which is just equal to what I keep labeled I over there. So I is equal to I1 plus I2. All the current that comes over here is all the current that is coming back in here. And then we also have some measurement points. I'm going to use green for, mm, I'm going to use red for that. Okay, so A, B, and C. Measurement A, B, and C. And you probably remember Ohm's Law Triangle, or as I drew it, Ohm's Law Circle. Using the circuit of figure 6.1, 6.1, with R1 equals 1K, so I'm going to label this R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm, and R2 is equal to 2.2 kilo ohms, and E is equal to 8 volts, so 8 volts. Determine the theoretical voltages at point A, B, and C with respect to ground. I've already done that. Alright, let's look at our data table. Data table 6.1. Let me draw that. We're we talking here voltage. Voltage theory. Measured. This was completely irrelevant. You should be able to do this one. The way you probe this is once more, after you build your circuit. What did I what fell? Paperclip. You set your voltmeter, you construct the circuit. Do note that these are in parallel, so you connect the positive of this to both sides of the resistor. I'm probably going to have to insert an image here of what that is going to look like. Um, you know what, might as well just build it. What do I need? I need a 1K and a 2.2K. So, got a 1K and a 2.2K. Hopefully the light catches it. I need some leads. That is from a positive, that is from a negative, and we use a breadboard. If you recall, in a breadboard, everything that is in a row is connected. So we just put these side by side. I'm going to put this over in number 30. And this one in number 40. Then I'm going to put this one in number 30 and number 40. And the way that I can connect the power supply to this is I can just do that and do this. If I can get these leads to actually not be loose. There we go. And now we have our circuit. Let me bring the current.
current down. Let me bring my voltage down. So I can bring my current my voltage up, but it's not gonna let me because I set it to give me zero current. If I tell it to give me more current, now I can get more voltage out of it. Now I am a constant voltage. And uh, what should this be? This should be eight volts, so That is 8 volts. And I'm constant voltage. What this here is telling me is what am I going to measure for my. What am I actually going to measure across these? So, this is my meter. Hopefully, that's not washing out. Is that more visible? Hopefully, it is. And I can come over here and I can measure the voltage across R1, which is this one, the brown one. Tells me negative because I did that upside down. 8.1. And then this one over here is the exact same. Now let's say that I go across. It is exactly the same. Now let's say that I go from here all the way to here. Same thing. If I go from there to here, same thing. Positive. Current is coming from here, through this wire, in through here, down into the uh, breadboard, and it goes up here, across, into the breadboard, then back here, and back into our unit. So we are measuring something like 8 volts, which is exactly what we expected. Another thing. That is not entirely accurate. It is actually 8.1 volts. Or 8.2. Eh, in the region. So, now that we know what our voltage is at A, B, and C should be, and I just demonstrated how to measure that, you can go ahead and do this part of the table by yourself. For table 6.2, 6.2 is a bit more interesting. I'm going to shut that off. And this time I'm going to use a proper eraser. Table 6.2 has. I made an extra one, whatever. Here we're going to have our current theory. Theory. Our measured. And our percentage. By now you should at least know how to calculate that percentage or that deviation. And, okay, so I need four R1, R2, R1, R2, total. Here is where this starts to get kind of interesting. As I mentioned before, the current through I1 and the current through I2 are going to be different. Remember Ohm's triangle. Or Ohm's circle. So, voltage, resistance, current. Uh, that should have been an I. What did I do with that thing?
Voltage Resistance Current. The beauty of this is you know two of these in this scenario. What do I mean by that? What is the voltage across R1? It's the same voltage as your supply. Look, it's connected directly to it. What is the resistance of R1? Well, you were told what it was. So, if you know what the... If you're trying to find out the current, the simplest way to do this is you put your finger over that, your current is equal to voltage divided... You put your finger over that, your current is, is equal to your voltage divided by your resistance. That means V over R is equal to I. What is going to be the current through R1? The current through R1 is going to be voltage of R1 divided by current. I'm sorry, divided by resistance of R1. And this is equal to voltage of R1. We know that this is connected to that. It's dropping 8 volts, so 8 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm, which is equal to 8 milliamps. By now you should know how to do that. So our theoretical measurement is going to be 8 milliamps. For R2, we do the same thing. What is the voltage of R2? The R2 divided by R2. The voltage of what is the voltage of R2? If you were to place a, a probe right here and then a probe right here, is that any different than placing a probe right here and right here? Or right here and right here. It isn't. So you have 8 volts going through R2. Again, that's not an 8. Um, that's also not an 8. The fuck's wrong with me? 8 volts divided by. Now, what is R2? R2 is no longer 1 kilo ohm, as it is now 2.2 kilo ohms. So 2.2 kilo ohms. And this ends up in. So we have 3.6 milliamps. So 3.6 milliamps. For total, there are two ways of going. When we talk about resistances in series, we know that when we have something along these lines, resistor 1 and resistor 2, R1, R2, we know that R total is going to be R1 plus R2. If this were a 5 ohm and this were a, uh, I don't know, 22 ohm resistor, I don't even know if 5 is a, it isn't really. So, our total for the circuit. This circuit is equivalent to a single resistor of value uh, 27 ohms. These things are equal. Except that here you have a voltage divider, but if you were to measure the voltage here and the voltage here, it's going to be different. When we talk about something being, this is the important part, when we talk about something in series, it means that they're having the same current through them. So for this one over here, uh, what do I use for current? Current is blue.
all the current that passes through R1 has to pass through R2. And that makes this sum valid. When we talk about parallel, you notice that not all of the that the current that goes through R1 is not the same current that goes through R2. Therefore, this is not valid. When something is in parallel, they have the same voltages across them. And since we know that they are supposed to have the same voltages, we do this. For our total, we don't know the current, we know the voltage, and we know the resistance. Let's assume that we have this and that that were equivalent to this. This is going to be our total. We know our voltage is 8 volts, and we know have a general idea of what our current is. We don't know yet. So, our equation follows. We are trying to find our total. We know that I is equal to I1 plus I2. So, I'm just going to write that I over here. We don't know R, so that becomes voltage divided by I. So, I'm going to write that as RT for R, R total, for total resistance, and that is equal to voltage divided by I, lowercase i in this case. But we know that since lowercase i is equal to I1 plus I2, we can write it simply as I1 plus I2. I1 plus I2 cannot further be simplified because we do know what the resistance for R1 and the resistance for R2 is. So now let's cover this part of the equation. Uh, let's cover it with something else. Because I don't want to keep my finger over there. Let's cover it with this little thingy. So, this one over here is equal to shut up V over for I1. I1 is going to be equal to V1 over R1. V1 over R1 is just again V divided by R1 plus the same thing for R2. What is I2? I2 is equal to V over R1. V over, I'm sorry, R2. I2 is equal to V over R2. So, oddly enough, this entire thing simplifies to R. Let me be consistent here. So, now I'm just going to copy this down here for so that I can have more space. V is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2. This can be simplified. V over 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. All of that times V. The V's cancel out. So this we are left with 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R1, R2 rather. Uh, where is this? R2. And this, this thing right here, let me use a new color for this one. This right here is how you add resistances in parallel. Know that the total resistance 
RT always goes down when you add resistors in parallel. It always goes down below the lowest single resistance. So in this case, commit this to memory, take a picture of it. I don't really care what you do with it, but I'm going to keep that one over there and just draw it elsewhere. That is how all of that simplified. In the textbook, you might see it as something along the lines of the inverse sum of all of the res inverse resistances. So you might see it as 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 yada 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 all of this to the negative 1. That is the same as this. You're just going to have more in parallel. So now let's compute our total. Our total is in this case our total is going to be equal to 1 divided by R1 which is goddamn eraser 1k plus that is ohms plus 1 over 2.2 k ohms to the negative 1. That comes out to 688 ohms. We know our total resistance. We know our voltage. What is going to be our total current? If I move this over here, Oh wait, no, I didn't have to move it anywhere. If we look over here, our V, our current, is equal to our voltage divided by our resistance. Our resistance is no longer R1 or R2. It is our total because we're trying to figure out what this circuit is. So in this case, our I, lowercase i, is going to be equal to 8 volts divided by 688 ohms. And whatever that is, give me a second, is equal to 11.6 milliamps. 11.6 milliamps. Kind of hesitant to use this eraser now, it's just garbage. Do you notice how these two also add up to that? That would have been the easier way of doing it, but this is important to know. Just know how to add resistors in parallel. And the difference between series and parallel. If some things are in parallel, it means that they are dropping the same voltage. If some things are in series, it means that they have the same current through them. Now, we can just go ahead and build a circuit. And if you recall how to use an ammeter, I'm not going to go over that again. That is in an earlier video. So I think we should get going. This is our circuit. Over here, I'm going to erase some of these things. Let's start with the more easy one. If I'm going to measure our total, I'm sorry, if we we're going to measure our total current, how do we go about it? We can just measure it at the source. So I can do this. 
That circuit is a 2.2 .2 and an R1, okay. Milliamps. Milliamps. So for the sake of simplicity, this is reading 8 volts. Please tell me that's registering. Okay, so this one over here is reading 8 volts. You can see it coming out from the positive terminal over here into the yellow lead. Yellow lead goes into our ammeter in the milliamps setting which is also set to read milliamps and it is currently auto ranging then from there it goes over to the red lead and from the red lead it connects to both R1 and R2 then current passes both through R1 current here is divided some current goes through R1 some current goes through R2 then the currents go back here they join together and they return to our unit. In this case I am reading 12.02 which is not that far off and this is our total current. So I'm going to write that down. Attempt to write it down. Okay, what do I suck at this? I'm going to write that as 12.1 milliamps. That is 12.1 milliamps. Let me turn that off. Now, if we need to measure I1, remember how to use an ammeter. If I need to measure I1, I need to break the path of I1 and make I1 go through the ammeter. So I can break it here, or I can break it here. For the sake of argument, uh, for the sake of simplicity rather, I'm going to choose to break it over here. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm simply going to disconnect. R1. from the power supply. I'm just going to go back here. And I'm going to need a jumper. Short green jumper. I need another lead. A blue one. <laughs> so, what do we have here? Actually, let me change this over. That should be easier. Oops. This is what I need. So what have I done here? 
Hopefully you can see it. Anyway. I'm going to move that over there. You can see the blue is right here. So, current is going to come out of here in the... Current is going to come out over here in the red post, in the red lead. So, red over here. Now I'm going to have this over here, it's going to come through here, and it's going to connect to this point in the circuit. From this point in the circuit, it will... I should have a pointer. Uh, what can I use for a pointer? I don't feel like using a knife again. How about an actual pointer? So, current is coming in through here. Notice that both R1 and R2 are connected on line 40. That right there says 40. And they are both connected to 40. So, current is going to come from here. It's going to go over R2 and back to there, which this black one goes back to the power supply. However, since we are trying to measure the current through R1, I is going to over here. Over here it's going to split into I2 and I1. We are trying to measure I1. Current is going to come through here. I1 is going to come through here. It'll go through here into the yellow. From the yellow into the uh, ammeter. Through the ammeter into the blue. And then back into here where it's connected to the black lead and back into the power supply. That means that the ammeter is connected. There is a break over here. And what I am doing is I am taking this over here. I'm doing that. So now I1 has to come over here. I1 has to do that with the circuit as it is here. And if we move some of these cables out of the way, that is a readout. Current coming in through here and through here, separating into I1 and I2. I2 goes straight back into the power supply. I1 goes into the ammeter, through the ammeter, out back here. It connects to the breadboard and then straight back into the power supply. So you have I1 plus I2 coming in here, or simply known as I. And then you have I1 and I2 coming back through here, that way, into the unit, which is also known as simply I. So all the current that is leaving the power supply is coming back to the power supply. And by our reading, that is 8.2 milliamps. Your readings are going to be different. That is not an 8. eight. 8.2 milliamps. Then, R2. We do the same thing. Rather than breaking it over here, we need to figure out what I2 is. So, the simpler way of doing that is breaking it somewhere. I need a black one. Here we go. And the simpler way of doing this is to just Build the circuit again. And now instead of that, we have this, and the yellow one connects to 
the lower end of R2. And the power supply connects to here. And this connects to this over here. So once more we have our current I total or I or total going through here it splits into I2, I1 and I2 it's better if I probably bring it up and bring in the pointer come on okay so comes out of our power supply comes into here you will note that these two are connected it splits into I1 going through resistor 1 and then it splits through I2 going through resistor 2 I1 comes here through R1 and then back to the power supply I2 comes here through R2 into the yellow lead into our ammeter hopefully that's a shot into our ammeter through our ammeter into the blue into the blue into line 30 of our uh, breadboard row 30 rather of our breadboard and it comes back to the power supply so on the black lead you have I1 plus I2 on the red lead you have I1 plus I2 and once more we do the same thing and we observe the results 3.77 which is not far off from what we expected again that is just error in that that is not exactly 8 volts. So, we do the same thing here. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Why do I keep drawing 2's? 3.77 plus 3.8 MA. Because that is going to continue rising as the unit heats up, yada yada yada. You've heard me say this before. And you should be able to compute your these are going to be dependent on what your experimental values are. These are just my experimental values. And I'm probably still going to have to do the lab again some, at some point. That pretty much covers tables 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. 6.4 is going to be with more things. Same as this, but with two more resistors. I'm uh, probably going to have to do that at a different time or in a different video.